is Thursday, March 14th. This is Jaguars Happy Hour. Jaguars Happy Hour is presented by the St. John's River Water Management District. And now, ladies and gentlemen, hide your Snickers bars. It's TV's Kai Stevens. Oh, I wish there were Snickers bars that came with this job. Snickers over in the other building. At training camp, they bring out ice cream Snickers for all the players during training camp. And yes, I do partake in that. Um, Kai Stevens filling in for J.P. Shadrick. Jeff Lagerman not in as well. So I have some guests with me today. But it's a big day here in Jacksonville. We've got all these new faces coming in. um, A bit of a carousel of everybody. We got to meet all these new players today. It's an exciting time. Can John sit down? John Osher is joining us up to the minute. Just right want to in. make sure it was good with you. I do appreciate that. Brian Sexton is also with us today. I was worried about him standing um, over there. I know. I, I don't want him to feel left out. It's a busy day. It I mean, that's for sure. Day. When they get these guys in here, they meet with the coaches, they take photos, they meet with the media. It's a whirlwind for them. It is. John, thank you for joining us. We're here on Happy Hour, of course, brought to you yes, by the St. John's River Water Management District, Florida's Water. It's worth saving. John, we were just talking about all these uh, carousel we've been going through of people, right? So we've had five different players coming in, and um, four four were signed free agents. And then, of course, Mac Jones, that was traded for. That went official this afternoon. So um, it's exciting to see all these new faces coming to town and potentially more things happening. Yeah, we had Mitch Morse yesterday, and I think collectively – You got an idea that uh, they're all impressive. They all seem to have uh, pretty solid leadership qualities. Um, I think Gabe Davis was a captain this year for the Bills. And other players who have that uh, feel, Mitch Moore certainly has that feel. So, uh, you know, look, I'm not sure that this is the most high-profile group of free agents they've ever had, but I think it – fits what they needed to do and I think it fit what they could do within the cap constraints and they all make sense which to me is the first step I, I'm I'm sort of past the point Brian where I'm going to get cartwheel excited over sure. the free agency class but I think these guys make sense for what they're trying to do well they spent 175 million dollars set a new league record a few years back right they didn't have the kind of money they couldn't go and play in the high-dollar free agency. It wasn't going to be the glitzy, glamorous class. Um, I think we all agreed that the Morse signing was the one that we were all most excited about because it was such a glaring need. It was a huge the need for the team, yes. That they, they lacked the ability to convert third down and short, right? They lacked the ability to be consistent with the running game up the middle, and it hampered their offense. You could see the way the teams defended them as they figured out, oh, they're not going to be able to move the ball on us. In the A-gaps. And I'll interrupt here. Uh, Ian Rappaport is reporting that Eric Armstead is close to a deal with the Jaguars. So oh, we don't know we that officially. This. We love um, some breaking reports, but though. But that's, uh, you know, Rap is pretty good at what he does. Listen. And that size in the middle, making Eric more Armstead's stout. Re- yeah. Six uh, foot seven. He's a 295-pound guy. An area that they need to be stouter in. Here's a question. How in the world are they getting it done? Right, if they it's sign him, mad, it's witchcraft. Well, look, who I, needs I, to know math, Brian? I'm, Stop bringing us down. All right, well, I don't want to. Just, I'm just curious. <laughs> you know, if they're going to sign Eric Armstead, who's going? Right, you've got 3.8 million dollars in salary cap room. I'm using Spot Track, by the way. Right, some people use over the cap. I use Spot Track, and they're roughly in in the ballpark. So there's some magic being done. I mean, there's some numbers being crunched. There's a strategy behind it because if you're bringing in Eric Armstead, you have got to find the money somewhere. There's a there's a Precious few places to create cap room on this roster right now, right? We've talked about them. Cam Robinson is one mm-hmm. because he gives you about $17 million in cap savings. Foye Luacon's another. He gives you about $7 million. Zay Jones gives you about four, and then it dries up pretty quickly. You know, the guys we're talking about who have any cap savings at all aren't guys you're going to cut. So it's interesting to see them still being very active with very little room. I will say we do have to address yesterday they saved some money because they did not re-sign Calvin Ridley. Um, He is going to the Titans reportedly, and there's big money going to him there. So, I mean, good for him, earning all that. Was that that $23 million a year is what he got? 50 guaranteed, 92 over four years um, is the report, which— And it was the 50 guaranteed. How do you say no to that? Well, how do you say no to it, and if you're the Jags— how do you go that way? You don't. I think and, people would be upset if the team yeah. did. Yeah. Well, they would certainly be upset in a couple of years when it completely hampered you with the cap. And, you know, look, I, I said all offseason, and I wrote all offseason, 
I think Calvin Ridley on this roster would have been good. Um, I don't know that it would have been good to the tune of building your salary cap structure around him at the expense of other things. And that's what 50 million guarantee would have done. You know, my sense of, of people's opinion of Calvin Ridley was based on hope, Kai. There were a lot of people that I've talked to in the last few days, whether it's in line at Publix or out at the beach, where they hoped that another year in the system, another year working with Trevor, would get the Calvin Ridley that we all had hoped we would see this year. You know, 1,200, 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns. We didn't see that. So going forward, it just, I just don't think you could guarantee $50 million on hope. And it just doesn't make sense for a franchise that has to get something done with Josh, that has to get something done with Trevor, that may want to get something done with Tyson Campbell next year if he comes back healthy and has the big year this year. I, a 30-year-old receiver that, let's be honest, in a contract year couldn't figure out where he was supposed to be on many routes, right? I just, that didn't make any sense to me. And by the way, now he's going to Tennessee, and he's going to run imprecise routes for a quarterback who isn't very accurate. Good luck with that. It will be interesting. I mean, that is a huge amount of money. I think I was upset when I first heard it. Of course, no one wants to see you know a Jaguar go play for the Titans. Nobody likes that. But when we see the numbers, you're like, oh, I would not have been super excited if Trent Baalke went that route, right, with 50 million right. guaranteed. Um, but it does, you know, now where's the wide receiver room going, John? Does this mean maybe they're focusing um, on somebody else that we're unaware of, or are they going to run with what they have? How do you see it unfolding? Well, I think they put themselves in good situation going in, in this sense. Um, it may take me a while to get to this point. In, in 2022, they were a good receiving core that made the postseason. You felt great about it at the end with – Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, and Marvin Jones. Uh, they were essentially the same offense last year, adding Ridley and removing Marvin Jones. And you say, well, they were worse last year. But they really weren't worse offensively last year. They were about the same numbers-wise, and then they dipped a little bit uh, once Trevor and Christian got hurt. I, they set themselves up by signing Gabe Davis with having a core next year minimum that's going to be Davis, Zay Jones, Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram. Well, that's not significantly different. You're plugging Gabe Davis in for Marvin Jones. Right. But, but, you know, uh, Marvin may run a little bit more precise routes and be a little more veteran dependable guy, but Gabe gives you a big play guy. So if they stick with these four, then I think they left themselves a situation where these four can go win in the NFL. Sure. And they had a chance. I think Zay would have been gone had had Calvin been signed. That's the only well, way you could have fit it under the cap. So you're upgrading that a little bit maybe with Ridley over Zay. But to me, the whole key, for, if it's these four, the key to me is can they give you 60 total games? Can they be healthy? Right. Because that's what really took the receiving core down last year, Zay being out nine and Christian being out five. You just compared Ridley to Zay. Let's compare Ridley – to Gabe Davis, right? So Ridley obviously has had big seasons, 1,000-yard seasons, and Gabe Davis has not. Uh, but he has 27 touchdowns in four years, plus five more that he scored in the playoffs. So he's a proven commodity. And the term that was used about him that I've heard is he's a deep ball guy who can go and get it, right? He's more of a perimeter guy, um, you know, sideline, 50-50 ball kind of guy. How much... This isn't the right way to phrase it, but where are you in that comparison? Do you gain anything or do you lose something when you put Davis in the lineup instead of Ridley? How much? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, realistically, I'd say probably a little bit. If he, if you told me I had to have one or the other yeah. and Ridley's it wasn't cost special anything. Traits. Yeah. There's it, no denying that. So uh, I'm not going to be disingenuous and say, oh, I wouldn't want really on the team. I guess what but, I'm just saying is, is that I don't think the gap is as big as you might right. think. Right. It's uh, in this offense, history has shown in, in Philadelphia when they won in 2017, was there a go to guy? Not really. Uh, the other comparison is always the Chiefs. When's last, you know, Especially Tyreek right Hill, now. a go to guy. But over time, that offense has always worked without a go to guy. Yeah. The go to guy was the tight end. Yeah. So, you know, it. It can work like this, and the whole key to the thing is, can they interior run block better, can they keep Trevor healthy, and can Trevor 
reduce the turnovers. I no matter what we're doing right now, those are still the three storylines to me. Right. And I think that's a it's a great point you bring up, John, because in this day and age, do you need a star receiver necessarily to win a Super Bowl? You don't probably. You can get by with a bunch of twos or whatever it is, but your quarterback does have to step up their play, right? We need to see Trevor yeah. take it to that point where he's carrying the team along, and we've yet to see that at this point. So he it'll be up to him to do that. Um, we don't know if he'll they'll add to the wide receiver room from today or if they'll run with what they have well they've got what eight draft picks now after sending the sixth round pick to the the patriots and it's a deep draft for wide receivers i mean that by the way you can repeat every year for reasons that we've elaborated on that's now what they do will they find one though is the question to identify someone and you are absolutely right that is because it's a lot easier said than done to find a wide receiver here's the guy who was the go-to guy for the eagles in 17 and it was Alshon Jeffrey, who is very much like Gabe Davis, a big-bodied guy who can work the chains and keep you on track, keep you on target. I mean, anyway, I didn't want to suggest that he couldn't go over the middle. It's just when you watch the routes that he ran. How he's been used so far. Yeah, right. And Buffalo used him as a down-the-field kind of guy. He was offsetting Stephon Diggs. Um, but when I look at the body style, yeah, he and Alshon Jeffrey, who was kind of the pivot man, especially down the stretch for the Eagles in 2017, are very similar guys. I'm just kind of keep the chains moving, keep that momentum. So if he can be consistent and get that, you know, rapport down with Trevor, that's huge. Can I say this too? <laughs> I, we, we heard late yesterday that the Texans were getting in on Calvin Ridley. If that was he had scary. gone to Houston, I might have scratched my head a little bit and went, uh-oh, right, with that quarterback that they've got over there. But the situation in Tennessee, I think, works that you won't worry so much about him being there. Correct. You never want to see him in the same division, but it was a, l- a little scarier than we thought it was Houston. It's, it's a bold move on Tennessee's part. It sure is. I don't know what their strategy is. I don't cover that team. Uh, but um, They're spending money. Y- yeah, they're spending money, and – uh, they have the cap room for it because they have rookie quarterback on first year deal, second round pick. So that makes sense in their part. Uh, good luck to them. Yeah. All right. It's a busy day here. We're talking a little bit about people that aren't in the building. We're going to talk about the people that are in the building um, as we got coming up here on Jaguars Happy Hour, presented by the St. John's River Water Management District. Of course, we've got five new faces here in Jacksonville. We'll hear from some of them coming up next on Jaguars Happy Hour. About lawn care during the winter? You can give it a rest. Lawns only need watering up to once a week. Really, that's it. Using less water means you're saving time and money that you can put towards something else. Before you run your sprinklers, remember, give it a rest and only water up to once a week. For more information, visit waterlessflorida.com. Don't get sacked by a no-name propane rookie Jacksonville. Draft an all-star and switch to Amerigas, the official propane provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the homes and businesses who know it was always the Jags. Show off your Duval pride at your next tailgate with a Jaguars grill tank from Amerigas. To find an Amerigas exchange location near you or to order a propane fill-up for your home or business, visit Amerigas.com slash Jacksonville dash Jaguars or call 844-PRO-JAGS. Looking for the best clearance deal of the year on trucks that deliver power, performance, and savings? Then it's time to say yes during Ford Truck Month. Yes to limited time savings on all remaining 2023 Ford F-150s. And yes to the number one selling trucks 47 years straight, Ford F-Series. Find all your yeses at the clearance sale during Ford Truck Month, only at your local Ford dealer. Based on 1977 through 2023 CY industry reported sales. I'm John Davis, Secretary of the Florida Lottery, and I'm proud to lead an agency that is creating brighter futures for Florida students, families, and communities. As the primary funding source of the Bright Future Scholarship Program, the lottery has helped nearly one million students reach their dream of a post-secondary education. And we will continue to do our part to ensure that every student across this state is aware of these opportunities and has the resources needed to succeed. Because together, we can build a brighter future for all. The Jaguars bring performance, strength, and passion to every play. And you'll find the same when you bank with EverBank. 
open an EverBank Performance Savings account, and score serious savings. See what you could earn at everbank.com slash jaguars. EverBank, advantage you. Member FDIC and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, Florida. This is Luke Fortner, center for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We all know the rush of a good game, but there's no winning with aggressive driving on our roads. It's all about strategy and control. Embrace the space with the driver in front of you, go the speed limit, and use that blinker. These are the moves that make us all champions of the road. Target Zero is our game plan for safer roads and is a testament to our teamwork and dedication. Join me and let's get everyone home safely every single day. As soon as I heard Jacksonville, I was like, thank God they called. <laughs> I was like, thank God. Um, I wanted to come back to Florida. I wanted to be around, you know, guys that I knew, you know, coach that I loved, and you know, the team's great. Um, shoot, we can never, we can never beat them. You know what I mean? So um, came, uh, came, came here, and you know, as soon as, as soon as they sent it in, you know, negotiations win, and then boom, I was like, yeah, I'm a Jaguar, man. Pretty easy decision. An easy choice. Happy to be in Florida as there are the rest of us. I'm Kainani Stevens. John Osier, Ryan Sexton are with me as we're filling in for JP and Jeff. Today on Happy Hour, presented by St. John's River Water Management District, Florida's water, it's worth saving. It's a busy day here. We've got some reported trades we're going to keep an eye on. And also five new faces are in the building. Gabe Davis, wide receiver from Buffalo. And he, as he said, very happy to see when Jacksonville called. Were yeah, you guys? No, no, I didn't know John, we were you excited? Side, so. Oh, no, it's okay. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, it, he, uh, again, I'll go back to, it. he fits what they want to do. He he fits what they're trying to do at receiver. My, it, my only concern at receiver is it's a very, very, very expensive room filled with a lot of second contract free agents. And eventually they are going to want to draft and develop behind that to get that a little more salary cap palpable, but I'm tired of talking about the cap, you know, for those, you know, for on the field next year, it does give Trevor an option. He hasn't had to throw it up and go get the ball guy. Uh, so it's one more element they have and I'm fine with it. To me, this group, Brian, it is a group that easily all four of these guys, you could see, uh, catching 900 yards worth of balls and seven to eight touchdowns. So um, that's very reasonable for all. Well, I would agree with you entirely, which is sort of what we saw from them in 2022. Right. Um, I like the big bodied receiver. Like, look, Zay is not a small guy, but he's not as big as Gabe Davis. And, and you can either, you can look at Evan Ingram as a smaller tight end or as a bigger wide receiver, but you see how effective he is. In this league, everyone wanted T Higgins. Right? They still do. Go trade for T. Higgins. I mean, I've heard it a thousand times. This is one of those big bodies. Not quite as big as T. Higgins, but the kind of guy we haven't really seen in Jacksonville mm -hmm. going back, gosh, I mean, <laughs> the mid-2000s. It's been since Ernest was here, right? It's been a long time since we've had that kind of a guy. And this is a, a gifted athlete. And maybe that argument that Trevor Lawrence needs kind of those weapons down the field, but Gabe Davis can make those big plays, which um, is is a skill set that not every wide receiver has. Um, and that's something that will be added by adding him to the lineup. So that's good to see there. Um, in terms of other people coming in today, we do have, we had Devin DuVernay, who's a return specialist, pretty much means we're not, he was coming out of Baltimore. So we're not probably going to see Jamal Agnew. We'll see him land somewhere else. Um, that's, I haven't seen a ton of him, so, but that's a, certainly a dynamic position that if you can help out on special teams, that can be a huge difference as we've seen. Well, Jamal had been hurt last year and uh, typically a returner who is coming in as a free agent Jamal had been here three years. That's a pretty long shelf yep. life for free agent returner to come in and be with the team. So uh, best wishes to Jamal, great guy. Uh, you know, I think when he was back in his career, this will have been a great stop for him. Uh, happy story. You don't always stay everywhere. Uh, Durbin A has been healthy. Um, he would seem to be a smidge of an upgrade as a receiver. Uh, Jamal made some big plays as a receiver. And he, he mattered in the offense. But I don't know that you ever felt like if he was going to be one of your four going out, yeah. that you loved that as an option. 
I don't know that Irvine's love is an option, but maybe a bit of an upgrade there. And he's been healthier. You feel like he's more in the prime of his career. You're signing a free agent like this for the next three years, not the last two years. Since we're just sort of prognosticating here, I mean, I'm fine with du- 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 Duvernay being just the return guy. I've got Travis Etienne, who can do a multitude of things for me. He can take some of those jet screens and do some of the stuff that Doug wanted to do the last two years with Jamal. And he's got better hands. Let's be honest. Last year, Jamal put the ball on the ground a couple of times and made you go, whoa, right? Like, all of a sudden, that was kind of becoming an issue. I I expect Tank Bigsby to have a bigger share. And Doug even talked about it at the, at the combine. He has to with the has spot to. that he was drafted at. Absolutely. And I believe in this kid. We talked about him a lot last year. So that will free you up to use ETN in that. Quite honestly, there is no lack of weaponry. If you protect this guy, which I'm going back to the offensive line. If you build the wall in front of the quarterback, there's enough weapons here to be as good as you were in 2022, effective or better. So I, I could see a lot of different things happening. They don't need DuVernay to come in and be a receiver. They need to be a great return man because Jamal Agnew came down here and was a Pro Bowl return man. You're going to lose that without him. They're gambling, right? It's crystal ball business. They're gambling that this guy is the next Jamal Agnew. Come in and play that role on this team for sure. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, we have uh, Darnell Savage coming from Green Bay. Ronald Darby, who's b- bopped around a couple different places at cornerback there. Um, John, is it a little, I know we talked about it yesterday. One might be a little more of a stopgap, the other two, but brings in a little bit more experience to kind of, with your new defensive coordinator, figure out what pieces work where and get some of the youth and see exactly what you have. Well, I think it was an affordable fit. Uh, I've used the phrase stopgap too. Um, But in this day and age, there's so much turnover that most guys are stopgaps. If if you're second contract free agents and you're there two years, that's a long stay anymore. So, uh, look, he clearly, from listening to him on the podium and from reading about it and, and, and from watching him, he loves playing press. He, he loves playing man-to-man. Uh, he will fit right into what Ryan Nielsen supposedly uh, loves to do. So, in that sense, when Darius left and when Trey Herndon left or, or were, you know, uh, not re-signed, you need two. Um, I don't. I know they like Braswell and Monteric Brown. Uh, do you love them enough to go in there with them? You needed to get at least one in free agency. Right. Uh, at this rate, I would be extremely surprised if they don't either sign another uh, third day, third level corner, or if he's not one of your uh, top two draft picks. I think it's still another corner. But to your point, yes, Darby gets them through this need period. Uh, but at some point, they got to draft some corners around here. Without a doubt. He's 30 years old. Um, but I made some calls this morning about him, talking to people around the league. They said he's got bright eyes. Look at him in the podium today. You'll see a confidence level. He's played press. He's played any situation they've asked him. Inside, outside. Play this week. Don't play next week. Play special teams. And the guy loves football. That was what I was told. He's a, he's a bright-eyed guy, which is saying he's very confident. And he loves to play football. You can't go wrong bringing a guy that fits your defensive scheme in like that, especially with young players like Monteric Brown and Christian Braswell behind him, he at least gives you a guy you can line up and play with and count on. But stopgap, like, this year. Confident. It's also not nothing, Kai, that Mitch Morris has played for Doug. Dar- I mean, uh, Darby's played for Doug. Yep. Uh, you know, over time, uh, I don't think the locker room was bad last year, no. but you need to make sure that it stays what you want. Uh, from listening to both of these guys, I'm sure when Trent leaned into Doug's office and said, hey, I'm looking at these two guys. Yeah, absolutely. But, like, I think Doug probably likes both of these guys very much coming in here and being guys who can come in and lead right away right. in the right way. We were all sitting there in the post game after that Niners game, and Doug came in, and remember he said, we haven't done anything yet. Well, he's bringing in some guys who've done something, right? Mitch Morse has played in some AFC Championship games with the Bills, and Ronald Darby won a Super Bowl with the um, uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles, and Darnell Savage has played in some playoff games, some consequential games. He's brought some guys in here who have done some things, and that's what that locker room lacked, guys who have been there and done that. And, and I it, think that's an important thing for them to, to fill this year. And at a sustained level, I remember telling you guys, it's it's that 
okay, you have one good season, but to go and play, you know, in a Baltimore, even Green Bay, where they demand success there as well, to have players that are on these teams where they're expected to win and make the playoffs every single year, it's different. And to know that you're going into training camp, you're playing for a coach where you know what's expected of you and you have to set that precedent with your players. You can't just have your coach telling you that. You need to see some players and have some leaders on your team that do that. And while Jacksonville is a young team, they can bring in some veterans that have been there and yeah. done that. Well, and, and, and by the way, if Eric Armstead ends up signing also, here, exactly. there's another guy, right? He's San played Francisco. a couple of Super Bowls. And I, and I think you got to give you got to give Trent and Doug and their teams, both coaching and, and personnel, a lot of credit because they didn't have a lot of salary cap room to work with. And they are making some very astute moves, guys that, again, it's not going to light up you know, social media with people praising them or radio stations, but they're guys who come in are good, accomplished players that come in at a number that works for this team while setting up the future. And you bring Armstead into the middle, and then all of a sudden, Robertson Harris, Devon Hamilton, Armstead feels a whole lot better yeah, it does. than what was here before. Yeah, sure does. That's a group you definitely feel differently about. Yeah, you sure. saw him on the field here when, we, when they were here in November. <laughs> He's just so, so tall and long and difficult to block. that We, we haven't seen that much of that. It will be a good one um, here on August. Happy Hour. Kainani Stevens filling in. Brian Sexton, John Osier are with me. We do want to invite you Jags fans to join us on Tuesday, April 16th from 630 to 830 at Everbank Stadium for the Be Inspired by Jags Jobs event. That's presented by the Florida Lottery. You can register for that right now at jaguars.com slash bright futures. Of course, we're here on Jaguars Happy Hour brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. Florida's water. It's worth saving. A lot of new faces here. We will be back here on Jags um, Happy Hour here as we talk a little bit more coming up after the break. What's the best part about lawn care during the winter? You can give it a rest. Lawns only need watering up to once a week. Really, that's it. Using less water means you're saving time and money that you can put towards something else. Before you run your sprinklers, remember, give it a rest and only water up to once a week. For more information, visit waterlessflorida.com. Jax fans, do you have a high schooler interested in a career in sports? High schoolers and one parent or guardian are invited to Everbank Stadium Tuesday, April 16th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. for a Be Inspired by Jags Jobs event presented by the Florida Lottery. Listen to a panel of Jaguars employees who receive bright future scholarships, plus meet a player, win prizes, and more. Space is limited, so visit jaguars.com slash brightfutures to register. Since 2014, there's been only one official home builder of the Jaguars, DreamFinders Homes. With quality built homes and a speedy move-in process, we're in 20 plus communities in the best locations across Northeast Florida. DreamFinders Homes is everywhere you want to live. So get off the sidelines, Jags fans, and get into the game. Let DreamFinders help you navigate your home purchase and offer great interest rates. Visit DreamFindersHomes.com for all your move-in ready homes and step up your game. The Jaguars bring performance, strength, and passion to every play. And you'll find the same when you bank with EverBank. Open an EverBank performance savings account and score serious savings. See what you could earn at everbank.com slash Jaguars. EverBank, advantage you. Member FDIC and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Looking for the best clearance deal of the year on trucks that deliver power, performance, and savings? Then it's time to say yes during Ford Truck Month. Yes to limited time savings on all remaining 2023 Ford F-150s. And yes to the number one selling trucks 47 years straight, Ford F-Series. Find all your yeses at the clearance sale during Ford Truck Month, only at your local Ford dealer. Based on 1977 through 2023 CY industry reported sales. I'm John Davis, Secretary of the Florida Lottery, and I'm proud to lead an agency that is creating brighter futures for Florida students, families, and communities. As the primary funding source of the Bright Future Scholarship Program, the lottery has helped nearly one million students reach their dream of a post-secondary education. 
and we will continue to do our part to ensure that every student across this state is aware of these opportunities and has the resources needed to succeed. Because together, we can build a brighter future for all. Not only familiarity with Doug in the past, but I've always had a keen sense of trying to get back to him ever since he became a head coach. I thought it'd be kind of a fun deal. Uh, you know, the culture, I mean, I, we got absolutely smacked last year in uh, uh, London, and, and um, you know, I've been a big fan of that defense for a very long time, as well as the offense, of course. Uh, you know, I think this league is a quarterback driven league. And to win in this league, you have to have the quarterback with the tangibles and the intangibles. And I think Trevor kind of embodies both of those things. So uh, that and, I mean, the sunshine doesn't hurt. Sunshine never hurts. That's offensive lineman Mitch Morse going to be the starting center for this team in 2024. I'm Kainani Stevens here on Jaguars Happy Hour, brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. It's Florida's water. It's worth saving for sure. And everybody seems to be happy to be in Florida. I mean, it's not a hard sell, I would imagine, other than, I mean, as long as, well, you get the, as long as you get the money right, I think it's an easy sell for environment. Which is what we were saying about you last year, right? As long as you get the money well, I right. Well, I don't get these kind of contracts, though, yeah. if, that, if that would make it a lot easier. Because I was a little scared about training camp, not going to lie. Sure. Especially because I hear all these stories. I was like, I'm going to pass out in training camp and everyone's going to be nice. I don't think you did, did you? I, I didn't, but we're very close to the MEC now. We're very fortunate. This isn't the old we'll days. Shade where you're just baking in the sun all day with no sunglasses on. So we were, it was, uh, you, it, you guys, eased me in. I appreciate morning that. Morning practices are easy. You got some guys who are going to have to get used to it, right? I mean, Mitch Morse sure. has been in Buffalo. Um, um, Darnell Savage has been Davis. in uh, Yeah, he's Wisconsin. been in Green Bay. And, yep. and if Armstead signs, he's been in the Bay Area. That, you know, that's... A nice little breeze a little over different. there. Yeah, a little different. All right. Well, well, these are good good problems to have, though, right? Good problems to have, especially around uh, November, December for them. So a lot of new faces in town. We do want to talk about the O-line. Mitch Morris was actually um, signed earlier because he was released by Buffalo. So we had him in here earlier in the week. He says all the right things. A veteran, certainly something they we've been talking about for a while, that they needed to address that issue. And um, Mitch Morse did address the issue in terms of coming in and starting over Luke Fortner, and he said he's talked to him already and that they feel like it'll be a good vibe in the room. You know, Luke and I have chatted, and uh, I'm just looking forward to competing and growing with him. Like, I think that's that's what football is all about, right? Like, it's, it's about, you know, no matter where you are in, in your career, growing and being a better professional and, and learning how to take your game to the next level. So. Um, you know, no matter what happens, how that works out, like for me, I'm I'm trying to be a resource for him. He's going to be a resource for me, and we're just going to uh, see how it plays out. But hopefully, first and foremost, just make a good relationship in this offensive line room. The last thing I want to do is polarize anything. Not a ton of divas in the offensive line group, so I'm not surprised that they're all on the same page there. But um, happy, at least, I mean, to see that. The team is understanding of, hey, we did something. It didn't work. Luke Fortner was an issue on that offensive line. Obviously, they dealt with some injuries as well. I think that eight or nine different players that started at one point on the offensive line this year. But it has to give you some hope going forward. And then, Brian, as we've mentioned, the draft is always an option. Without a doubt. And But when you, when you put a player, John, like Morse in the middle of your offensive line, and you've re-signed Ezra Cleveland, and you've got two guys in Cam Robinson and Walker Little, you feel pretty good about the guys that you've got and upgrading. And then obviously they love what Anton Harrison gave them last year. So the one spot that you're talking about now, thinking, all right, we got to make sure we've got competition there, is with a guy who played five time, is a five time Pro Bowler, right? In Brandon Sheriff, mm -hmm. who, by the way, credit to him, gutted through an ankle injury yep. that lingered all season long last year. And he just never was willing to come out of the lineup. So a lot of credit there. You can see, you can make the case where this offensive line, just by adding Morse and re-signing Cleveland, is poised to have a significantly better outcome this season. Well, it should, and uh, just by – if they're stouter up the middle, which I get – it was hard to tell in the last five games what exactly Ezra Cleveland was. Right. Because you're coming in, uh, trade deadline trade, you're playing the last five, he gets hurt pretty quickly. Against the Browns. Even if he hadn't. There's so much going on. You know, you're losing games. It's, you know, this guy's going to make all the difference. Get him a fresh start. They obviously like him. Uh, what I like about Mitch Morse is, A, 
his results show you that he's stouter on the interior than Luke Fortner. So you start there. But center is also, and I'm sure Luke handled this part very well. A center is, is, of all the offensive line positions, it's a leadership communication position. Uh, a veteran center who, who clearly is a mature, intelligent, engaging person, this guy seems to me like he can step in right away and be, if not the captain on the offensive yeah. line, he can be the captain. Like, well, he may not have the C, but this guy can lead. Steer the he ship. can communicate. He can learn the offense. He can give Trevor ease. Yep. You know, so he fills all that. So even if he's not the Mitch Morse that he was maybe in, in year five, he certainly strikes you as a guy who can be a good veteran for this team for a couple of years. You tell us. I mean, you've interviewed enough guys and, and, and understand body language and, and presence. Mm -hmm. You were with him yesterday. He gets it, and that's huge, right? And, John, you're alluding to it. Because you need that on the offensive line, we we have we can't forget Trevor is a young quarterback, mm -hmm. and and to have a center that's been there, done that, knows how it goes. He's played, you know, with Patrick Mahomes in his second year. He's played with Josh Allen for several years. To have that kind of calming presence, and especially if you happen to do have the injury bug again, the centerpiece. Uh, knock on wood is the same and that can kind of keep some security because there were times that we don't want to say Trevor necessarily saw ghosts but you could tell he was getting you know running around a little bit last season and maybe that was just you know not being familiar with where people were going to be at certain times and you need your quarterback to feel comfortable if you want them to be successful now I'll throw this out there they've signed Mitch Morse it's great they've re-signed Ezra Cleveland fantastic I still want to see with one of the first two picks I've I've loosened up a little bit. I wanted to be 17. Man, I wanted a right tackle, right? Because I think you got Anton Harrison as your long-term future at left tackle. At least that's my understanding of what he's capable of. A great draft, a great draft for offensive linemen. Go get bigger, meaner, better, younger. Have a guy in there. Because remember, Cam's in the last year of his deal, and so too is Walker Little. So you have one tackle, one, under contract for 2025. Don't let this thing be good this year, and then... Slide back, go find a guy. There are moves to be made for sure, whether that's um, at 17 in the first round or in the second round um, as well there. And we do want to mention that Eric Armstead proposed deal reported. John uh, saw on Twitter a little bit earlier from Ian Rappaport um, that Eric Armstead might be added because they got stouter on the offensive line. The defensive line was a little bit of an issue at, towards the end of the season. They were great with the uh, run stop early and then kind of things were falling. I don't know if it's communication or what, but things were falling off at the end there. So if you can have someone like that in the middle, it just changes the whole dynamic if that's going to be what you have in the center. Well, it gives you three, you know, this team's going to play a 4-3. Uh, it gives you Trayvon, Josh, Eric Armstead. That's three, and uh, people are going to get mad when I say this, that's three Pro Bowl-level talents. I know Trayvon has not played to a Pro Bowl level yet, but at the end of last year, he's coming on. He's coming on. And in, in terms of uh, stoutness, you know, it, if you line up Armstead and Trayvon, uh, that's hard to move, you know? So all of a sudden you're better. If you add to that a healthy Devon Hamilton, who was really coming out at the end of 2022, the formula is there. Now things have to go right, but uh, Trayvon next to Armstead on the line. Uh, There's a lot of length there, right? Yeah. I mean, Armstead is six foot seven. I, he was here. He made a, a visit nine years ago out of Oregon when they were letting guys talk to us when they would come visit. And I, I remember vividly him filling the doorway, right? He and, and Brenston Buckner, pardon, DeForest Buckner, mm -hmm. what, they were teammates at Oregon. They were back-to-back -back first round picks by the Niners. And when the Niners went to the Super Bowl in 2019, you had those two massive bodies in the middle. Now he's 30 years old, okay? So he's not a young man, but you, you've got incredible wingspan. For Trayvon, which makes him a very dangerous player, you got the same thing on this with even more weight and height. I think that's a an interesting. If I'm if I'm Ryan Nielsen, I'm really intrigued about the games I can play with these two guys on one side of the line together. It ups your athleticism in that regard, just having oh, that kind man. of range there. Well, and putting your hands up and blocking passes. Well, that'll do it too. We gotta we gotta see that. Um, is Ryan Nielsen, I'm sure, has come in and said what he wanted to run, but mm -hmm. he's got to have a hand in some of this, right? Like, hey, I need this and that. Do you think that's something you focused oh, on? Oh, certainly. Uh, in the secondary, there's no question. I mean, yeah, it, of course. Uh, and up front as well, because uh, there are games we played up front, but everything that I have 
been able to glean from reading and talking to people about Nelson. He, he, he likes to rush with four and wants to get it. All defensive coordinators who run a three, who run a four, three, want to get there with four, but he really wants to do that. And now you've got three guys on your interior and Devon, when he's right, Devon at the end of 2022 was getting penetration. Uh, all of a sudden you've got four guys on your D line. If, if you line on uh, Trayvon Armstead, Allen and Devon, who can all get some pass rush. And uh, so can Roy, when Roy was right at the end of 20, 2022, he was getting some pass rush too. So uh, maybe an area to be more disruptive up front. Well, I don't think I can add anything to that because <laughs> I, the one thing I was going to say was Devon Hamilton from the end of his rookie season uh, was a guy that you could see. He was powerful so he could push people backwards. But for as wide a body he is, and he's wide, mm -hmm. he can slide between two, two offensive linemen like few big guys do. So if you've got that and he's not having to play, you know, 65% of the snaps, you'll get him back closer to where he's supposed to be. A nimble big guy. Nimble nimble on his feet Yeah, sometimes. Did you see him out on the practice field last summer with his little... Little course, tiny baby. Little like two-week-old child. Yeah. I mean, holding him with his great big hands, you could barely see the baby. It's a big guy, but he's fast. So I think, is this something where maybe we might see a later round pick trying to get someone on a line and maybe someone a project not just like physically a large person that you could work on to like build going forward because obviously this is great but in a couple of years we have the same issue yeah they did it last year with Lacey and and he it, it, quietly Lacey played most of the games and 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 was there so that's sort of what you do uh you always sort of hope a later round pick can come along and be impact on the defensive line that's tough because usually, you know, the great big ones usually go early. So, uh, sure, I wouldn't have a problem if you went defensive line, offensive line, one, two in the draft most years. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's hard for teams to do that when you have needs. And I think it'll be hard for this team to do that this year, frankly, because you still have a need a corner. And that is something I'm looking at. I don't, John, I don't know if you've publicly said what you think they're going to do at 17, but I still feel like corner might be – in the mix there or do you feel like they're edging one oh way i think it's other? definitely the mix oh i think it's um i feel like that's what's going to be i it's just so hard to get a good corner like i feel like the question it, is will there be a run on them before they draft right. will they have to move will they be available at that yeah, point? It, yeah it's uh trent really 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 likes drafting big people uh, so I, amen which is fair it's a which football is great. game yeah. and so i'm saying that as a compliment because that's how you build it uh most GMs do. Most GMs want to do that. But then when you get on draft day and you've got a hole in your roster and you're thinking how you're going to line the team up, mm -hmm. that's where the push and pull of life and real decisions and sitting in the room going, I, you know, I wish I had five picks right here. You only got one. So The variable that we can't account for is we don't know who they like. right? We right. don't know who's the number one corner on right. the board. And are they willing to go up because they covet the guy from Toledo, perhaps, right? That's a name that a lot of people have talked about. Or the guy from Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, who's going to be there and who do they like? There's just so many variables to it, but you can't go wrong with a big guy. The way the board falls, as they say. Um, we got a couple more weeks to talk about that. And, and also, by the way, Trent, how many times did they move back last year, right? Yes. I mean, they moved from 24 to 25 to 27. I think we all so. remember because you were like, yeah, they're finally on the board. Right. Oh, just kidding. Oh, just kidding. So the <laughs> possibility exists that they could, that they will do that again. They'll play around a little bit to get in a spot and get the guy who matters the most to them. All right. We're here on Jaguars Happy Hour brought to you by St. John's River Water Management District, Florida's water. It's worth saving got our microsoft social media questions i'm sure a bunch of you guys have questions about what's going on right now john has some answers for you so stay with us here on jaguars happy hour what's the best part about lawn care during the winter you can give it a rest lawns only need watering up to once a week really that's it Using less water means you're saving time and money that you can put towards something else. Before you run your sprinklers, remember, give it a rest and only water up to once a week. For more information, visit waterlessflorida.com. 
Don't get sacked by a no-name propane rookie of Jacksonville. Draft an all-star and switch to Amerigas, the official propane provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the homes and businesses who know it was always the Jags. Show off your Duval pride at your next tailgate with a Jaguars grill tank from Amerigas. To find an Amerigas exchange location near you or to order a propane fill-up for your home or business, visit Amerigas.com slash Jacksonville dash Jaguars or call 844-PRO-JAGS. The Jaguars bring performance, strength, and passion to every play. And you'll find the same when you bank with EverBank. Open an EverBank performance savings account and score serious savings. See what you could earn at EverBank.com slash Jaguars. EverBank, advantage you. Member FDIC and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Don't make a bad call when it comes to servicing your home. Cooling off with a baby pool in the house to fix your air conditioning problem is a bad call. Trying to catch a wave in a flooded bathroom is a bad call. Using a burning electrical panel to make s'mores is a bad call. The next time something goes wrong, make a good call to Donovan. Whether you need air, electric, or plumbing service, Donovan is always a good call. It's why we've been trusted by our customers for almost 40 years and why you can trust us to deliver fast, reliable service to your home. Donovan, always a good call. Visit DonovanAC.com today. Hello, I'm Dan Fields, and we have some great news. Fields has a vehicle you want in stock, priced right, and ready for delivery. Fields Auto Group is Jacksonville's luxury automotive destination for Cadillac, Jaguar, Land Rover, Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, and Porsche. Inventory is back and available for immediate delivery. And every Fields customer can take advantage of our Fields Amenities Program with complimentary loaners, car washes, and our cafes. You deserve the best. Stop by today or go to fieldsauto.com. Jags fans, do you have a high schooler interested in a career in sports? High schoolers and one parent or guardian are invited to Everbank Stadium Tuesday, April 16th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. for a Be Inspired by Jags Jobs event presented by the Florida Lottery. Listen to a panel of Jaguars employees who received Bright Future scholarships, plus meet a player, win prizes, and more. Space is limited, so visit jaguars.com slash brightfutures to register. got to get rid of one, okay? So we got bagels, waffles, pancakes, and French toast. Bagels. Bagels. Okay, okay. My, my, my bagel guys are good. The bagels are good. <laughs> <laughs> Love an icebreaker question. Darnell Savage was asking everybody in the building, safety from Green Bay, what you would get rid of given the options for breakfast foods. I think one of them is kind of already out of the mix for me, but we'll get there. So his options were bagel. French toast, pancakes, and waffles. As I, long as I can have bagel. Correct. Well, first of all, bread. here's me. Bagel's kind of out of... I feel like it really should be French toast, pancakes, and waffles. Right. But if you're going to put it in, bagel is absolutely staying. See, you're a Northeasterner. I'm a, a Midwesterner. A good bagel. A good bagel. I'm a Midwesterner. Bagels mean nothing to me, so I okay. would toss the bagels out. Yes, it has to be a good bagel. I guess that would be the precursor to that. But I think waffles are going for me. Mm. I like a good waffle, but I feel like a lot of waffles don't hit home. So I'd, I'd say French toast because I, I'm more of a basics guy. And if you had to, you could live off bagels and waffles and pancakes. Mm-hmm. French toast really isn't good unless you have syrup on it. So you're going pancakes without syrup? This is madness. Yeah, if you if you had to, I'd rather go enough chocolate chips on them. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess it's accessories. The uh, condiments I like are important. Like a blueberry on my pancake. Blueberry pancakes, absolutely. Yeah. Now we know. Look at this. We're all getting to know each other. As long as we don't have to give up bacon. No, bacon's obviously involved in this. No matter Will there be what. beer? Oh, for sure. <laughs> okay, well, I, by the way, have well, a recipe. Whatever. There's mimosas, beer, and bacon. I have a recipe for a French toast that's infused with bourbon that you might like. Also, I croissant French toast. Is, I have very little right. question I would like that. <laughs> bourbon involved. Yes, absolutely. As long as we got rid of the French toast, <laughs> yeah. that sounds great. All right. This is not a breakfast show. It is a sports show, I promise. Kainani Stevens, Brian Sexton, John Osier with me here. On Happy Hour, we're filling in for our guys, JP and Jeff, who are off today. Brought to you by the St. John's River Water Management District. And it's been a busy day, but a fun day. We like when new faces are coming to town. Um, a little bit, probably more like two years ago when you guys had a bunch of people coming in new, as opposed to last year, it was a little more quiet. Um, uh, probably a similar roster, not as many free agents coming in. But it feels like, John, we've discussed a little bit just to reiterate. 
Eric Armstead, obviously a big name. If that comes to fruition, that's floated out there that he'll be added to this mix. But of the people that are coming in, you know, veteran presences, you know, filling some needs, but also nothing crazy, which you want to build off what you have, but also address issues. Yeah, when you get tight against the cap and have to make changes, um, you have to manage what you do in free agency a little bit. And Brian's mm-hmm. mentioned they spent a lot anyway. But they, $75 million that year. But they really, this year, couldn't come in and just break the bank on guys. They had, uh, when they decided that uh, Rayshon and Darius were clearly not fits for what they wanted to do, well, that's fine, except now you've got situations where you need those players. Well, it would have been hard to go out and get top of the market guy in those two situations. So again, are they worlds better from a just pure, Hey, look at my depth chart and with this talent. No, but I I think their scheme fit better. And and I think they've made logical moves in some, in some important places. Well, they're trying to win this year, right? I mean, they, they lost the chance to win the division on the final play close to the final play of the season. So they're not looking at it as the roster long-term. They're looking at this year. And for them, the guys that they went out and signed, they're looking to fill gaps. I mean, Ronald Darby is 30 years old. That's old for a football player, right? But they think he can still play. And Eric Armstead is 30 years old. Morse is 31. Morse is 31. So they are clearly looking at these guys and the value for 2024. Even though, because of their cap, they're having to make these multi-year deals and push some of the money out. But you're always trying to have an eye towards two, three, four, five years down the road. And that's where the draft comes in, which is next on their list. It's good for me. If I'm looking at it from a fan perspective, I felt like last year maybe they, you know, other than the addition of Calvin Ridley off after his suspension was up, it was a similar roster the year before where you finished. Yeah, there was a great, you know, playoff game in there, comeback. That was awesome. You won the division, but that was a 9-8 and eight team. Then you got pretty much same roster nine and eight team and yes there was things that happened throughout the season of course but I want to see change in the offseason even if you're a Super Bowl team you see change in the offseason and we're certainly seeing that so far we'll obviously see that with the draft as well but so far I feel comfortable with the the, the plays that they're making so far at least the additions that we've seen through free agency that's a good point because the Jaguars did bring everybody back off of that team um, and usually your 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 turnover is about a third of your roster, which means you're going to lose a couple starters out of your starting 22. Um, that just that didn't hit them last year. They were able to adjust the cap and make that one work. But, you know, new blood. This you, is you, much more familiar position, I think, for most football teams to well, kind of replace and continue. Right. And you got to bring guys in that you can develop that are your guys. And you've also got to keep the cap replenished. You can't. I'll give you an example because I, I, I'm a bit of a cap geek, right? The New Orleans Saints look like the 2002 Jacksonville Jaguars. They have been keeping everybody, keeping everybody, you know, extending contracts and pushing money out. And they're in a position where they got under the cap this year. They're okay this year. Next year, they have already a $55 million deficit. They're $55 million over the cap that's projected for next year with only 42 players on the roster. You never want to get to that point. You never want to get to a point where you just keep, 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 keeping on and don't, and don't, because it it kills your cap. There'll be a fire sale at some point, I'm sure. For it's going to blow up next year. Let's go to some of our uh, Microsoft social media questions powered by Microsoft. It's also an Ozone mailbag because we know our Ozone uh, listeners, readers, viewers, they all have their questions, John. So I appreciate you sharing these with us. Um, Keith from Duval by way of Miami. This is a good point because I thought of this recently today because we haven't talked about it after that deal fell through. But what are your thoughts on the kicker position? Well, they have Riley Patterson on the roster. Uh, Brandon McManus was allowed to hit free agency which I don't think was a huge surprise Um, I think right now they're in decent shape because Riley has shown he can make big kicks I would be surprised if they don't I mean they'll certainly have competition for him Mm -hmm. Uh, I would be a little surprised if that competition is not a draft pick I think they'll draft a kicker at some point and, and, and try to find the guy that can be a X number of year guy. When I was in Kansas City last year, the rumor was that they were trying to get the kid from Michigan. Uh, is it Jake Mooney? That um, yeah, that was one. Yeah, they were. I think they were trying to get him. That was the rumor, and then the Niners jumped over the Jaguars and took him. 
Uh, so they were trying to address the position. You're always trying to address it with a young guy that you can bring in here and be that long-term solution for you. I don't know if there's one in the draft. I haven't, I haven't looked at the kickers yet. I've been focused on the offensive line. Yeah, well, hopefully they're not taking a kicker at 17, so that'll be a little, uh, no. little farther down. There's no Sebastian down. Janikowski in this year's A little draft. farther down the line, hopefully. Um, our second question for you, John, is Eric from Jacksonville Beach. He said, we talked a little bit about this already, sure. but what will the Jaguars do with wide receiver now? Round one, right? I don't know. What, round one, you think? Well... That was the automatic sort of quick trigger. Oh, they lost Ridley. It's, it's a huge need. They got to go get one in round one. I I would be very surprised if they went after it in round one, considering what we have, we've all been talking about, that Trent likes big people um, and the need at corner. Uh, so I think, I think if something fell in their lap where they could, you know, if a veteran out there, made sense they could still make the same maneuver with zay uh being available for release uh but i i kind of think that they don't see it as a huge need and i i don't know that for sure but i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised if they don't consider it a hot button issue right now you know I, there, there's part of me that says no receivers in the first round unless you're marvin harrison jr right that's six foot four guy i know there's the the brian thomas kid from lsu that that has that sort of a frame and then I remember last year that Zay Flowers was a late first round selection mm -hmm. by the Ravens, and he was really productive until that you know that playoff game against Kansas City. I mean, he's a really really good player for them. So I suppose if you're sitting there and there's some guy that you have a high grade on, if I'm going to be a best available player purist, well then okay. If you've got a guy who can be an impact player, I just for the reasons that John has talked about on some of the shows this week, there's so many receivers now. Mm -hmm. The game is at the college level is a passing game too, and there's just tons of receivers out there. Go find your guy. There's only so many big men on the planet who can move. And I just don't want to get away from those guys. I do think we should mention today the other person that's been in the building via trade is Mac Jones, backup quarterback, kind of the role they're seeing him as. He was in the same draft class as Trevor Lawrence. Things did not work out in New England. It was a bit of a mess up there. Not all his fault. They no. had, you know, three different uh, offensive coordinators, one of which was not a real offensive coordinator. So that's a tough situation to be in. But he's a Jacksonville kid. He's coming back home. I have to imagine Doug Peterson's kind of like, let's see what I can do with this. Maybe I can make something out of it, John. Um, low risk, high reward, maybe be a solid backup if you need them to play i think i think what you say exactly right it it's low risk uh low cost a six round pick and if if he's here for a year then you've got a six round pick that you're you know paying minimally for a backup quarterback and from max perspective uh he said it in the presser a minute ago um i want to get the trains back i want to get the train back on the tracks sure so uh, he's a young guy. He's got plenty of experience. He talked a little bit in the presser about just how f fast things move for a rookie. Uh, when you're drafted, you come in, and then all of a sudden you're the guy, you're the guy, you're the guy. I think this year could be good for him. You're with a, a quarterback guru in Doug. You don't have to worry about the pressure of what's the media going to say about me? What's Belichick going to say about me? What's this going to happen? What's this going to happen? Um, and it's it's entirely conceivable for Mac if it – if Trevor gets hurt for a month, which let's hope not, but if it does, he comes in, plays well, goes three and one. Uh, the quarterback needy free agent team in 2025 is beating down his door. And so that scenario could easily play out for him. And uh, he's a good kid. He, even though he went to bowls, uh, this Episcopal <laughs> grad hopes he does well. Listen, he was an academic All-American with a 4.0 at Alabama. Okay. Uh, he already has his master's degree and he's made $12 million dollars almost $13 million playing football. At the end of this year, it'll be about $15 million. He's at home, right? We heard Gabe Davis talk about being back in the sunshine in Florida, the big smile on his face that he's glad to be home. I think he's in a situation where he can relax and work on himself, which he couldn't do as the starting quarterback, right? Uh, I think it's a great situation for him, and clearly he's excited about it. I love the quip about his mom coming to pick him up from work. I'll promise you this. If my kid's living at home and he's made that kind of money, you're not picking him up. He's paying the mortgage yeah. for the next couple of months. You're not going to be his Uber driver and come pick <laughs> him up. I'm not giving either? him free rent. I gave him my 24 year old free rent for a couple of months. <laughs> yeah. Mac ain't getting free rent. Right.
Fair enough. Now he's my kid. Maybe his mom feels different. Well, I'm sure she's happy to have him home. Uh, a busy day here in Jacksonville. We appreciate you guys joining us here on Happy Hour, presented by St. John's River Water Management District. It was a busy one. We've got some rumors in the works, so make sure you check out Jaguars.com and follow all of us, and we'll give you the latest information here with Jackson.